Well, we've got a couple of butterflies around here today, but what is papiliography? Well, it's a word I just made up. It means picturing butterflies. And today I want to tell you about getting good photographs of butterflies, especially photographs that you can add to your records on eButterfly, photographs that will help confirm your, your identifications. I'm going to cover three different techniques with the help of my friends. First, the use of a DSLR camera. Second, point and shoot cameras. And third, the common option for most people, using your cell phone. Can you get a decent picture of a butterfly with a cell phone camera? Here I am in the beautiful Ramsey Ravine and I'm scoping out butterflies. Now I don't have a fancy phone or a fancy camera but I do have this one and I'm trying to get a pretty good shot of a butterfly and there's one right here. So try to get in really close Get a really good picture of Polites Themistocles. He's being super polite. There we go. So now with this photo, I can take it back and post it to eButterfly and uh, we can get some more data about it. The truth is you can get a good photograph with a cell phone, but you've got to remember a couple of things. First of all, don't get too close. They'll focus closely, but not that close. If you get too close, it'll focus behind the butterfly, not on the butterfly. The second thing to remember is, unless you've got a really high-end, brand new cell phone, don't zoom in. If you zoom in on that picture, it's going to make it worse, even if the butterfly is bigger. Another thing you might like to try, although it takes a lot of practice, is taking cell phone photos through binoculars. The process of digiphonocularizing, it's really awkward and bizarre. Get your phone on camera mode, zoom in a bit, maybe halfway then focus on whatever you want to focus on. I'm going to pretend to take a picture. I'm not actually going to take a picture because there's nothing in front of me, but I let's pretend I'm focusing on a green comma butterfly because I once got a picture of a green comma this way. And then you kind of line up your phone with your binoculars and I kind of press them together and you got to find the central light spot. It's not easy. And once you find it, oh, there it is. Yeah. Then you sort of have to aim and figure out what it is you're looking at. This is really awkward. You're going to hate this. But if there's a, like a super rare butterfly across a canyon or something, and this is all you got is your binoculars and your phone, you can get a picture. Digi-phonocularizing. You heard it first here on eButterfly. Pretty much every sunny day, I take my net and my vials and I come over to this meadow back of my house and catch butterflies and, and, and do account for the e-butterflies, but mainly catch a, a few specimens to take home, cool down in my fridge and take portraits of. I dearly love taking a really good portrait of a butterfly. This is, this is the only camera I own and it does all the uh, things that I, I want to do for taking pictures of butterflies and other bugs. It's uh, small, it's compact, it uh, rotates, uh, and it's just automatic. Pushes and shoots. Push and take a picture. I don't have to focus it or anything else. It does it all for me. Wonderful camera. I love it. In the bag I have some cooled bugs. Start with an alpine. This is all you do. Put it on automatic.
There. The, the nice thing about this whole process is, is, is within minutes of heating up, they go right back to doing what they were doing before. They, there seems to be, I can see no, um, it's just this little time lapse in their lives. They take them out, take some pictures, and away they go, back to what they were doing. There really doesn't seem to be any impact that I can see, unless you step on them accidentally. Some days when I get a really good picture of a really good butterfly, I just get so high, I get, it's just, it's like, I get so stoned I can hardly talk. And, and my eyes will, will just overflow. It's just, it's, 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 uh, it's a wonderful experience. It's, it's almost a semi-religious experience for me. And it's such fun. Oh, Gary gets such beautiful images and he's such a cool guy. He's got his own style with respect to both. Of course, not everyone wants to be hands-on with butterflies and you have the choice between being hands-on or hands-off. In a place like a national park, you always have to be hands-off. So it's good to master both sets of techniques. If you do want to get into the hands-on approach with butterflies, well, then you get to use a butterfly net. And that's a fun experience. Maybe it'll take you back to your childhood. Once you've got the butterfly in the net, fold the net bag over the rim so that the butterfly stays in and you can get the butterfly out using a jar or a bottle or broad tipped forceps, the type that uh, stamp collectors use. After that, you can release the butterfly unharmed. Trust me, I'm an entomologist. Often we release insects unharmed after capturing them in nets and guess what? They live. It's fine. Don't worry about it. If you want to take the hands-off approach, then you've got another challenge. Now, I like point-and-shoot cameras. I like them a lot more than cell phone cameras because they're designed as cameras. They have the controls in better positions and often they have more controls as well. But, in general, a point-and-shoot camera focuses closely only when it's set to wide angle. And that means you've got to get that camera in close to the butterfly. Couple inches, couple centimeters. And that can be kind of, well, it's a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. It's an all-consuming negotiation between you and the butterfly to see if you can get into its personal space without causing it to panic and fly away. I think you'll find that uh, sometimes it's easy and with other butterflies, it's darn near impossible. Still, it's a lot of fun. If you get serious about photography, you're probably going to want a serious camera. Now those, you know, cell phone cameras are fantastic, point and shoots, they're getting better all the time, they're fantastic too, but I love my DSLR. And SLR means single lens reflex. You're looking through the, the lens that takes the picture. And the beautiful thing about that is that you can focus so precisely. You're not looking at a screen. I like to focus on the eye of the butterfly because they look so much more alive when the eyes in perfect focus in the picture. There are a number... Is that thing going to land? Oh, man. There are a number of great uh, uh, DSLRs out there. I use a Nikon system, but there's great Canon cameras, great uh, Olympus, you know, all the, all the major systems. The, uh, the lens that I use, the body's not so important, although uh, the newer bodies have better sensors and better controls. I use what, uh, what Nikon calls their 105 millimeter micro lens, and that's a close focusing lens. I add a 1.7x converter, teleconverter, to give me 
175 millimeters of telephoto, which gives me pretty good reach. And as you can see, I don't have to be terribly close to this fertility to get really nice shots. Oh man, that's so beautiful. I missed these guys. I haven't seen them since last year. And then you'll notice I got a flash on here too. Should have picked a better stance. And the flash is set to a minus one EV compensation. Oh man, I'm completely in heaven right now. This is so nice. I can see the gray eyes on this baby. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, and with the Gaylardia flower, couldn't be any better. A little ant running around his feet. Oh man, where was I? Camera, lens, converter, flash, minus one EV. Don't need the flash, but I kind of like it. And uh, the thing I like about, about this rig is that I can work at a, at a distance from the butterflies and I don't have to be right up on top of them. Now, some of my friends who, um, you know, got into the butterfly thing through birding, they'll just use whatever lens they use for bird photography for their, uh, for their butterflies. And I've seen them use like three, four, 500 millimeter lenses, sometimes with flashes and uh, flash magnifiers. Pardon me, common roadside skipper. They get great shots too. The only drawback of using, uh, you know, a so-called bird lens is that it, it has a, a, a fairly long minimum focus. So you may have to back up to focus on the butterfly. Anyway, I recommend it. Very expensive, worth every penny. After all, what is life for? But to chase butterflies and take pictures. What could be better? So there you go. The truth is, no matter which technique you use, no matter what kind of camera, you can get good results. And every one of those three different types of cameras gives a different sort of picture as well. So get out there, give it a go. Butterfly Beauty, it's timeless but technology for capturing it is improving all the time it's only going to get better get out there take some pictures and please consider submitting your records and your photographs to eButterfly Well, it has a really horrible common name of Tawny Edge Skipper. So I prefer Polites Themistocles because he's polite and boring and we couldn't find a cooler butterfly. But um, I don't know, it is what it is. <laughs> Sorry. It's, they're, they're really ugly. You couldn't have given me a prettier butterfly. <laughs>